So in this video, I'm going to talk about how to set up an Express API using TypeScript and Node 16, which is the latest version of Node at the time of recording. Actually, it's Node 16.11.1, but you get what I'm trying to say. So you're probably thinking, I've seen loads of these types of articles before on Medium and dev.to, and let me tell you, this one is gonna be a bit different. I'm gonna talk about using more modern tools, the latest tools you can use now, and we're gonna be using ES modules for everything, so no more require. We're gonna use imports and exports native to Node 16. Now, I'm gonna have a link to this article in the description, and this is the step-by-step -step process. I'm not gonna go through everything step-by-step -step in this video. I'd expect you to either have gone through this before or have an understanding of what I'm gonna talk about. The first thing to do is to make a directory that can be whatever you want. I've just called it my awesome project. Then set up npm using this command. It's pretty simple. Then install the dependencies. So of course we're gonna install express, TypeScript with the relevant types. So we've got types for express and types for node, which will be dev dependencies. Then we're going to install SWC, which I think stands for super fast JavaScript slash TypeScript compiler or super fast web compiler. I'm not sure which definition is correct, but this replaces what Babel would have done. So this is going to compile our TypeScript code into JavaScript. And as you can see here, the API or the packages are very similar to Babel. So we've got the SWC CLI, which is similar to the Babel CLI, which will allow you to write commands to compile the code and SWC core, which is the core package. And you can't really use CLI without installing core because there's no core code for the CLI to speak to. Finally, we're gonna install Nodemon, which is going to be used to refresh the code each time that a change is made. So when you make a change to the file and it's saved, Nodemon is gonna refresh it. Before I continue, I do know there is a way to watch the code using SWC. So SWC has a flag, which I believe is dash dash watch, which will allow you to watch the code. So whenever you make a change in the file and save, it will refresh the code, similar to Nodemon. But the reason that I'm using Nodemon here in this specific scenario is because the SWC watch command cannot execute a script on completion. So here, I'll have a link to this in the description as well, but here is an issue somebody's raised to say, it would be great if once the watch command has completed, so on success, you could run a script. You can't do that at this time. So that's why I'm using Nodemon to achieve that very thing. So once all the packages are installed, then we need to set the configs up. So the first one is a TS config, which there is a very handy way of doing that, running this command. It will generate that whole file for you and have the common parameters set up. So this is what that looks like. There are lots of comments in here and you're more than welcome to take them out, but I find them useful to refresh my memory on what certain things are actually doing. So by default, it will say the target is ES5, the module is CommonJS, and this will be commented out. And because I wanna focus on the latest features, we're gonna change these two values to use ES2020, and we're gonna uncomment isolated modules. There are some people who say, you shouldn't use ES2020 in production, and if I'm being honest, I don't see why not. These are new features that are being added to JavaScript, and if you can't use them in production now, then when is the right time? If you're a bit hesitant, that's fine. You can try this out on a side project or just run through this article just to see it working, but you honestly have nothing to worry about. Now for the isolated modules being uncommented, the reason we're doing that is because with build tools like Babel, SWC, ES Build, they compile TypeScript to JavaScript individually. So it, it compiles individual files. And the reason that this is commented out in the first place is because the TypeScript compiler will by default, run through the imports in that file and compile those as well, just in case there are types that the overall file needs before it can run. For most web projects, that isn't the case, so it's okay to uncomment this line. But if you are creating a project that imports types that are required for the code to compile well, in other words, each import would have to be compiled before the main file can be compiled, then I recommend you leave this commented out. But for most cases, it should be fine uncommented. The next thing to do is to create an nvmrc file, which is a file that makes sure the whole project is running on a specific version of Node. 
The benefit of this is if you have a, a teammate or a friend you want to share this code with and say they're running node 12, they would see that this project needs to be running node 16.11.0 and would install it in order to run it. Now, there are some ways to have that happen automatically. So the second you change directory into a folder, it will read the MVMRC file and get that version of node for you. But we won't go into that in this video. Finally, in your package.json file, we're going to remove the scripts file that has been created with npm in it and replace it with this. So let me go through what each line is doing here. First, we have a build script, which actually does the compilation. It will get all your TS code from the source folder, compile it and put it in the dist folder, which is short for distribution. Next, we have a build dash dev, which will do the build step and run the code in dev mode with the inspect flag. So the benefit of this inspect flag in Node is so that if you were to set breakpoints in your IDE, like VS Code or WebStorm, you could hook up to that in the code and step through your code to analyze any bugs or issues that have been created. Next is the dev script, which uses Nodemon. And what Nodemon is doing is it's watching for files that have the TS extension. Once these files have been changed and are saved, it will execute this script, which of course will first run the build script, put the code in the dev environment, and then run the code in inspect mode. Finally, we have the start script, which is for production only. It will build the code and then run it in production mode. And that's pretty much it. Now for this setup, like I mentioned before, we're gonna use the latest things and we're gonna use ES modules to create our API. So because of that, we put a type module in the package JSON, which treats every single file that has been compiled to JS as a module. And the last config file we need to create is an SWC RC file, which compiles the TypeScript to JavaScript and aims for the Node 16 environment. So our code will support all the features that Node 16 supports. This is great because we won't need to get any unnecessary plugins or polyfills or shims because we're using the latest and greatest version of Node. Okay, and finally, we write some code to make sure that everything has worked. This is a simple express API. When you navigate to slash test, it does a get request, returns 200 and prints hello world or, or returns hello world to the client. And that's it. So let me go to the code. I've actually put this code together for you to see. And if you follow the steps correctly, you should have the same thing as me. Now this needs to be spaced out a bit to make it easier to read. Now, of course you can add a git ignore folder to ignore the dist folder, node modules and anything else you want to ignore but for now, we're keeping it simple. What I'm gonna do is run the code in the dev environment and in the server environment for you to see what happens. I've done that before, so what I'm gonna do is remove this folder just so you can see it being built. I'm gonna go into my terminal and run npm run dev. Okay, so as you can see, Nodemon is watching for file changes and the server is running on port 3000. So let me go to that in my browser, rendering our hello world exactly as we expect. With the combination of SWC and Nodemon, the compilation times are really, really fast. And I'm gonna show you that now. I'm gonna go into my code and change it to hello world too. Go into my browser, refresh. And just like that, it's recognized the change. It was almost instantaneous. Before I used SWC, I was actually messing around with Babel. And Babel, for those who don't know, is the go-to tool for any kind of JavaScript compilation. But after using SWC, I don't think I could ever go back to Babel. Here is an example of me running the same conversion, so two files instead of one, with Babel. So Babel source, which will get everything from the source folder and put it into the dist folder. It will also look for extensions that are .ts. It took 202 milliseconds, which isn't slow. It's actually fairly fast. I did the same thing with the exact same files using SWC and it took almost a quarter of the time, which is insane. If you had larger projects, think about that in a higher order of magnitude, you'd have massive savings on compilation. And that's why I would recommend using SWC for any kind of node API projects you have. Let's not forget there is another tool, which is called ESBuild. And I did actually experiment with this. And in my experimentations with ESBuild, I feel like it was a tiny bit faster than SWC. But the reason I didn't go ahead and use this in the article that I wrote is because the API for, for Node and specifically for TypeScript to JavaScript compilation 
isn't as straightforward to use as SWC. If you've used Babel before, SWC is almost a like-for-like -like conversion. You can convert from Babel to SWC. But from Babel to ES Build, there's a bit more work involved. And for the time savings you get, I'd rather use SWC than using ES Builds to do directory conversion of TypeScript to JavaScript. Okay, now let's have a look at the code. You can see we have a new dist folder. And in that, the code that has been transpiled is pretty much identical to our source code. And that's because we haven't actually done any fancy types here. We don't have multiple files that we're importing into other files. So it's relatively simple. Now let's stop the dev command and run the production command. So just npm start. This step was of course much faster than the dev step because there's less involved. And it does a pretty similar thing. It also converts the code from TS to JS, creating a distribution folder, but there's no watching a file save. So if I were to save this file, nothing will happen in the terminal, nothing will happen in the browser, which is expected. Now let's shift gears and go to a slightly more complex project, but using the same SWC and Nodemon technique. So let's stop this server and jump to this project. Now on the surface, this project looks as simple as the one I just showed you, but there's more going on behind the scenes. We're using a .m file. There isn't much at the moment, but this is a template for future configs that will be set. And as you can see, the port number has been set in this .env file, which has been loaded up here in this index file, and that is being used in the index.ts file. For the eagle-eyed amongst you, you would have noticed that the extensions for files are being added. So even though this is index.ts, the extension is logger.js or index.js, even though, as you can see, logger is ts and index is ts. And the reason for that is because the TypeScript compiler doesn't resolve file extensions. So if I was using something like Vite or Webpack, then I could omit this extension and even omits the index completely. And when it builds, it will add the extension to it. But because it doesn't, the extension needs to be added manually so that when the code compiles into JavaScript, it knows what file to read. Now, if I'm being honest, I'm not too annoyed by this. I'd rather write the file extensions in my code than install another dependency and have another config file. I want to keep my code as simple as I can while being as readable as I can. I'm also using Husky for git commit hooks. And there's also a bunch of ES lint code in there to lint my code. So if I were to do something like say, expect this to be a string, that's incorrect because type is not string. And that's ES lint checking my code for me before it compiles. So even though there's not much more happening compared to the other project. There is more in terms of configuration and the setup that I've proposed in the article is working fine. So feel free to go and try it. Feel free to mess about with this and let me know what you think in the comments below if you like the setup, if you think it's something that you're gonna use going forward. Before I end this video, I wanna give an honorable mention to the Vite Node plugin. This is a plugin I really enjoyed messing about with. It's very easy to set up. It allows some really cool Vite features to work in Node. The only problem I had with this was to do with the extensions. So like I mentioned before, the extensions of imported files need to be written in the code. And what Vite was doing, or what the Vite Node plugin was doing, was doing that resolving behind the scenes. So I didn't need to have these extensions. This would work fine. But if I used SWC to compile the code, it wouldn't work because it needs the extensions. It's just a compiler. It doesn't do any resolving. And the way to get around this is allow this plugin to compile code to production, but it doesn't do that. It's just a dev server. So until this package does it, and I'm sure the developers are working hard to get it to do that, it's not ready in my opinion, but it's worth a watch. It only has 165 stars at the moment, but I'm sure it's gonna rapidly soar. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you found this video useful. I make videos about web and game dev every Thursday. So if you like what you watch, go ahead and subscribe to see more content like this.